And I'm back. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. This program that I'm using to do the voiceover only allows 15 minute sessions. So we had just uh, finished up physical properties. These are ways, these are just a few of the ways that we can begin to qualitatively, without numbers, describe what something looks like. So those are physical characteristics we just talked about. Physical change, this is when we physically change something. And if you recall, back in class, I took a piece of paper and I ripped it in half. Wild and crazy lesson. That's a physical change when I ripped that piece of paper in half. So it remained paper. I just had two pieces of smaller paper and that's what this line is talking about right here. It's a change in, the a change in which the composition or makeup of the substance remains the same but the shape, size, or state may change. So I ripped the paper in half, it's still paper, but the shape of it changed. I now had two pieces that were small in size. If I take a candle and I melt it, that puddle of wax is still wax. It hasn't changed. The only thing that's changed there is the I guess the shape of it's changed. It's gone from a long cylindrical candle to a, a puddle. Uh, the size, we may have lost a little bit of it due to evaporation. So the, the volume may be a little bit smaller, but the big change here was the state. It went from a solid to a liquid. No new substance. It's still wax. Melt an ice cube, we get water, it's still water. We rip a piece of paper in half, it's still paper. No new substance is a key here. And quite often, and the key word here is often, because not always, but often it's reversible. If I boil water, so I go from a liquid to a gas, I can condense it back into a liquid again. Dissolving salt in water. So now we have salt water. I can reverse that change. I can boil off all the water and I'd be left with a pot of just salt. Sometimes we can't reverse it. That piece of paper that I ripped in half, I can't put it back together. I can hold the two pieces beside each other with tape or glue or staples, but that's not putting a piece of paper back together. Likewise with chopping wood. Or if I cut a piece of wood in half, I now have two pieces of wood, physical change, different size, different shape perhaps, uh, but it's still wood. And I can't put that piece of wood back together. Gluing it or nailing it is just holding two pieces really tight beside each other. I haven't actually put it back together. And so some pictures of physical change here, ice melting, of course, we can reverse that. Uh, a rock crumbling or breaking, that cannot be reversed, but each of these pieces is the same thing, it's just rock. Bending a piece of metal, I can unbend it and undo that. Then we got into chemical properties and chemical changes. So chemical property is the ability of a substance to change or react. So when silver comes into contact with oxygen, it will tarnish. It will get this black, it's not rust, but it's this black coating on it. And it's a very slow process. So if you uh, clean some silverware that you might have in your house, it'll be days and weeks and months before you sometimes you start to notice that tarnish back on it. Um, metals react with acids. So some common chemical properties, rusting or corroding. So this is a chemical property. To combust or burn is a chemical property. And reacting with acid, a chemical property. So talking about those a little bit, corrosion. So this is a slow reaction where oxygen in the air and the metal react with each other. And we get something new. Unlike when we ripped the piece of paper in half and we got nothing new, we get something new here. So you can see the silver here. It's been cleaned off, but up here, that silver's not as lustrous, it's not as shiny anymore. It's because it's got this black coating on it, that tarnish. And that is a whole new product. The silver, atoms and the oxygen atoms came together, they reacted 
and they created something new, Tarnish. Uh, likewise, in your car, you get oxygen, and you get the metal of your car, the iron. It comes together, it reacts, and you get something brand new. Those iron atoms, those oxygen atoms that have uh, reacted with each other, they no longer exist. They're gone. But they have created a whole new product, and that is their rust on your car. Combustion. So this is a fast reaction of a substance with oxygen. So things like propane and gasoline and hydrogen react very, very fast. Now, a chemical change, unlike a physical change where we're just changing the, the shape of it or the state of it or the size of it, a chemical change is where we actually get a whole new substance. And of course, this is very difficult to reverse, if not impossible. So baking a cupcake. You put flour and eggs and butter and milk and all these things together. You put it into the oven. A chemical reaction takes place and you get a cupcake. You cannot unbake it. You cannot take the egg back out. That, that egg is gone. You cannot take the flour back out. That flour is gone. It's no longer flour. It's something new. A nail rusting. You cannot take that rust and take the oxygen and the iron back out of it. It's something new and you can't reverse it. Likewise, you cannot unripen an apple. We can't always see this new substance. So we have look fors. And when I say we can't always see these new substances, sometimes uh, they're invisible. Sometimes they're occurring at a microscopic level. So we have look fors. First of all, a new color appears. Uh, a great example here is if I take two clear liquids, mix them together, and they turn blue. That's a new color. That tells us that at a microscopic level that a chemical reaction has taken place, and we can see that new thing in that it's blue. Heat or light is given off. So combustion, when a piece of paper is burning, you cannot actually see that process taking place. What you see is uh, the light from the flame being given off. So you're not actually seeing the, uh, the wood reacting with oxygen and turning into a gas or turning into water. You don't see that. What you just see is the, the flames. So that's telling us that uh, chemical change has occurred. And of course, a fire, another uh, indicator is the heat that it's giving off. Bubbles of gas form. You mix vinegar and baking soda together, you get a brand new uh, product, a brand new substance. It's in gas form, and we see that in the form of bubbles. A new solid is formed. This is where, uh, it's called a precipitate. This is where you mix two liquids together and you get a solid. And you're going to see this in one of your labs coming up. I'm going to be able to do one of these labs virtually with you. And so you should be able to see this and a change of odor. Now, in the chemistry lab, we never intentionally smell things, but when you're at the campfire and you are roasting marshmallows, you can smell the change. You can smell those marshmallows, uh, the sugar in them caramelizing, and that's telling us that a chemical change is occurring, that change of odor. So here's some examples. So fireworks. Uh, we have a change of color, heat and light are given off, we can smell them, so there's a change in odor. Uh, in the case of these, I guess Alka-Seltzer dropped into water, uh, they are, the, the chemicals in them are reacting with the, the water, and we get something new. Uh, a new gas is being created, and we can see that gas in the form of bubbles here. And in an egg, in this case, it has changed colors. We can see it's continually changing colors, especially over here at the margins. It's turning brown. Uh, this was clear before. It's turning white and then yellow and then brown. And if my wife is cooking it, eventually black. Don't tell her I said that. I'll deny it. And even the yolk has changed color a bit as well. Glow sticks. I'm sure you've all used these. They contain a couple chemicals that are separate from each other when you crack them and the 
the chemicals uh, start to mix with each other. And I shouldn't say mix, but when they come into contact with each other, chemical uh, changes take place and we get whole new substances. How do we know that there's a whole new substance in there? Well, in this case, it's giving off light. In this case, we probably can't smell it. Uh, we can't see any bubbles. Uh, but we can see that there is light given off. And of course, in a fire, uh, you can smell the change. You can feel the heat giving, being given off. You can see that it's creating light. So uh, new substances are being created there. Carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, water, uh, the smoke, carbon. All these things are being created by the the uh, combustion that's happening here, the oxygen and the fuel, because they are warm enough, are reacting with each other. And we can see that through all these telltale signs. And I don't know if we got into characteristic physical properties. I don't think we did. So I'm going to end our lesson here. And our next lesson that we get to will be characteristic physical properties. So I think for today, just reviewing these two videos, um, printing these off or saving these notes if you don't have them uh, with you as well. And that'll be it for today. Have a good day, ladies and gentlemen.